It's been estimated that over two billion dollars is stolen from artists through streaming fraud. That's all these artists out here that are running bots, getting fake streams, and taking money that should go to real artists who are putting out real music, good music. And it's about time that that changes when it comes to bots and how things look going forward. There's a couple of big announcements and there's a couple of moves that artists need to make themselves. We're gonna talk about it in this episode of No Labels Necessary. All right, so the big thing that we got to start off with is Amuse launched the stream check feature, which allows artists to know if their music is being used in streaming fraud or not. Okay. This is massive. And I just wanted to start off this out with this out the gate because, one, I don't know if some artists are using Amuse, the distribution platform or not, but I think this is something that every platform is going to need to adopt because this is something that just makes sense. Yep. So many artists that we work with talk to all the time will be like, yo, man, I didn't know that my song was being botted. You'll, they'll text us, hit us up, and be like, yo, I'm like panicking. Because they know that DistroKid, yeah. yeah, so many of <laughs> these platforms are taking their stuff down, taking money away from them, locking them out of accounts. Things that make sense if you're doing wrong on purpose. Mm -hmm. But we're not even talking about situations where an artist pays a platform, let's just say you pay for a promo company, and that promo company bought you, and you didn't know that that promo company was gonna bot you. I'm talking about even worse than that. An artist who just wakes up in the morning, not paying for any promo at all, and somebody done added them to a playlist that has bots on it, things that they have nothing to do with, and you're still getting hit over the head on these platforms and punished. Yeah. So yeah. I, I love the fact that Amuse is doing this, um, they talked about the fact that a lot of the infrastructure they built in the past has allowed them to get to this point where they want to be educated about the streams, but also, yeah, you go in constantly and you can see playlists and all these things that your music's being added to that might or might not have bots. But if there's a strong sign, it will be actually a different color. I'm not in their platform, oh, so I color can't. Color coded. Yeah, I can't tell you exactly <laughs> what it looks like, but they say it's color coded, which is hard. And again. I'm putting this out there because this 100% needs to be uh, like just be applauded and copied yeah. straight up. Yeah, and I agree, especially because it's one of those things that distribution companies have seemingly had access to and been able to do for a while, mm -hmm. right? Like we can assume that if they're penalizing people and they're they're detecting it, that they've had this technology or this system for a minute. And to your point, it makes sense to make this public. Like the only way we can really curtail fraud is if we stop purposeful fraud and accidental fraud, you know what I'm saying? But to your point, the accidental mm -hmm. fraud, they need to at least have that warning system or, or that, that red flag that pops up letting them know what's up. Y'all so. supposedly care like y'all say. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, man, I'm just using me as a quick little, like, oh bro, I'm fucked up and bought these streams, so yep. you gotta lock them out and keep this money. You're like, yeah, nah, that's crazy. So check this out, it says, Stream Check offers artists access to a panel where they can review their uploaded music. Each track has a color-coded status bar reflecting the share of a track streams that were flagged as artificial by Spotify over the past month. A status bar marked low means there's little artificial activity and no need action needs to be taken. But an orange or red bar indicates fraudulent activity and Amuse offers artists access to a knowledge database to help them take action and restore their catalog to health. This is beautiful. This is beautiful, man. Like y'all say, you know, the distributors and the platforms and the DSPs don't care. And I think that's been merited in many ways over the years, but this is something that's legit. And we can't deny that this helps um, because we know we can't stop all the, the, mm -hmm. the bot stuff. The bot stuff is beyond all of us. You know what I mean? So actually having a way to be aware of it proactively and the fact that they're giving the steps, that's actually pretty big. So like, to me, that's one of the big indicators of what's going to change over these years. I think people are going to become more more aware, mm -hmm. and just competitively, that's such a huge win um, for Amuse as a distro. I think other distros are going to copy that, and that's going to become a norm. So yep. I'm happy about that. Yep. But then there's a few other ways that the bot, you know, uh, streaming fraud or just streaming in general is going to change and be affected in this space. What are your thoughts though? I got I got two that I want to talk about. What do you got? Yeah, I think I think one is going to um, empower more of the artist community and the fan community to call out botting because you know to your point, there's never really been like a system 
to kind of grade it against to be able to tell. But I think that as people like us and other organizations have more conversations about what botting looks like, um, and as to your point, more stuff like this comes out, then yeah, it's gonna, I think naturally start to be a certain section of artists is gonna start calling shit out, you know what I'm saying, when they, when they see a spade. And I think we've also already started to see the consumer base call it out. Yep. You know, like off camera, I was telling you about a post that I saw um, like a week or two ago where there were like music fans, not like industry people or industry pages, but what seemed like music fans on gossip pages calling out Meg Thee Stallion for botting streams on her album. And, you know, she's not the first. I've seen instances with people like Don Tolliver and other big artists like mainstream acts that you slowly start to see now the consumer base is looking at you in this way, trying to see if you do it. And if they do, they just start the conversation amongst themselves and it kind of bubbles up into almost like the street justice type of thing. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's fucked up. You bought and streams, take that shit down and you know, something happens. It's like a streaming BBL. Exactly. Like, we see it, bro. We see it. Like, we know it's there, bro. We, we like, know it's there. Quit acting like that's yours. And the crazy part about it, you made me think about something because people are calling it out so much. If we have a platform like Amuse that's doing this, a lot of times that starts to become like free as well. Like that type of stuff. Yeah, so you go to yeah. sites and then check. Yeah. So then people are going to start calling other people out because I will be able to t put your information in a little site or access it through one of those cheap type of marketing tools that a lot of us industry people have access to. And when we have a Drake Kendrick battle and people are like, you bought it your streams, people will just be able to get a screenshot and say, look at all these artificial streams. Are you, 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 are you sure you got a number one this week? You know what I mean? Like, you'll start to see stuff like that, I think. Now, that's a good point, man, because it, it makes me think, and like, you know, some of y'all might not have been paying attention to the, the music business space at this point, but there was a point where I remember Justin Bieber was getting called out for body streams. And, mm, and this was yeah. like, this had to be like four or five years ago. Yep. And I remember it wasn't because people noticed like any weird bumps in his streams. It wasn't like the usual signs you would pick up, but fans had noticed like, oh, there's like these particular cities that are always popping up in his uh, Spotify listenership. Yeah, yeah. And the numbers don't make sense. He's tell, it's saying that he got 300,000 listeners out of a village that has 15,000 people in there or some <laughs> shit like that. And I remember like at the time thinking like, oh, that's that's pretty crazy that people like caught that and, and caught it out. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, bro, that's crazy that people caught that and caught it out because that's some shit where like, you really have to be in the know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like how many mm -hmm. people know which countries are the most used when it comes to bot forms. Like that's a very small percentage of people. And like even, and not even not yeah. knock anybody that doesn't know that. Like there are professionals, like people who do their jobs well that don't even know that that's the way that it works. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And so like when you piece it together and think like, man, like this random group of music fans went and got their information and then was able to piece that back together to this situation is crazy. I hate it on cuz. <laughs> like, that's it, bro. Dang. It's a new <laughs> level of hate. And every artist gonna get some level of hate. So yeah. I think that we're just gonna see that get stronger. Like more artists calling artists out, more fans calling fans out. Now that the platforms have a tool to stand on where they can say like, cause I think to your point, right? What was so hard about enforcing the bot thing with artists is that artists can argue back that one, I didn't know and then two, no one's ever taught me a standard or a set of things I should mm -hmm. be looking for to know that this is happening. If my third song ever gets put in a bot playlist, I'm just happy my song getting streams. I didn't know that this shit, I've never been in the playlist before. Yep. But now these platforms are giving them a, a veil of protection by being able to say like, hey, we're, we're not only giving you a tool to help you figure it out, but we're now also starting the conversation of this information being accessible anyway, which is, gonna better the industry, right. then year two from now, bro, like, yeah, these platforms are gonna be ruthless about taking shit down, bro. Like, it's gonna be ugly. Yeah, like. <laughs> I gave you your warning shots, man. Yeah, gave you two the- Two or three. Gave you the book of knowledge, gave you the warning shots, even gave you a little bit of time to breathe and adjust, bro, at this point, you know, it's all on you. Hey, I, I think, here's my other prediction. Although there's gonna be this time where everybody knows what everybody is doing or it can easily find out if somebody's Biden or not, mm -hmm. in that in between time, I think it's gonna be pushed in a place where only big artists will be able to use bots. Oh for yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because like we've seen it already in the past, we haven't yet to see a big artist already get their music taken down for some bots, and we know there's plenty of them who've used bots. And I think that's the part that hurts and sucks, right? It's like, man, these people are biting at a hundred million, ten thousand times the rate that I'm I'm buying at, yeah. right? They have way more streams, and I have these 
couple of thousand. How come y'all are picking on me? Because they had the protections of the uh, label. Like that, that's just, it's going to be how it works. It's like, and are y'all paying the labels that extra money that they bought it? Or are y'all just saying, hey, label, like, we're not going to pay y'all for this. You know, we're not going to take it down, but like, we're just not going to pay y'all. Or like that's, it's, I wonder, I wonder how that relationship looks. Do they give them that extra money or do they just say, we're going to allow you to have the vanity and we're going to keep the extra bread ourselves? Yeah, I mean, if I had to ballpark it, I would move towards Vanity. Because, I mean, you know, not to throw on the, the DSPs, but they, a part of their job is to get artists excited about the platform and hope that they promote the platform and push the audience back, right? So I know that if I give, if Sean got an album coming out on Friday, and I know that Sean, anytime Sean drops an album, he does 100,000 streams minimum. So Sean knows that. Sean's been looking at his data for years. Yeah. So if Sean wakes up on Saturday morning, and he look at his streams and he got 100,000 streams like normal, you're not doing anything different. You're going about your life as planned. If you wake yeah. up that day and you got a million streams on your shit, are you, you you singing the praises of that platform to the moon. Yo, everybody yeah. go go show love to Spotify. They yeah. just put me in blah. Go show love to, to Apple. They just And so it's like these platforms know that and these platforms know that artists specifically are usually number motivated. Like if I want to make you move and make you jump, let me help you increase your numbers. Yeah, increase your numbers. And you know what I'm saying? You you have a higher chance of folding and being a part of that. So yeah, I 100% think it's, it's the last one. Dang. Like, you know, like, hey man, give my boy 100K so he'll post this uh, playlist flyer on his story. Like, I mean, right, yeah, that, I mean, like. we know that's what TikTok, <laughs> Instagram does. So I guess like they are a content platform in their own right. So why would DSPs be any different? And see, you actually bring up a really good point that I don't know if I would have got to if you didn't say that. But that is, that for me, this last like year and a half, Maybe we'll say two years. I personally feel like the the streaming fraud conversation really started when Disho Kid did their purge. I feel like that's when it became like now it's not this thing where like people are in the shadows are talking about. It. It's like oh now this is a very like public issue and it, it even spilled over outside just the music space. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right, forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't want to get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, that's no labels with an S, and put in the code no labels 2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. Foreverfan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels 2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. The biggest thing that I am, uh, that makes me happy about just the conversation that's come up in the last two years is that to your point, there are platforms that have already openly admitted that this is a thing that we do. Not necessarily, we can argue if it's bot traffic or not, you know, I'm not here to do that, but they've all admitted to doing something that will help you inflate your numbers if you are in their good graces, whether it's legit or bot or not. Streaming platforms are the only ones that keep fighting against that. So I have to assume that like, man, if, if you know, Meta is admitted to doing it, if TikTok is admitted to doing it, like, we see it happening over there and to your point it's like okay if you were taking down everybody i would feel like you had anything to do with it but like you know 100 people did it this week and only you know 30 of them got taken down and the 30 that did it are, happened to be the 30 smallest artists in the list and so i think that this is, these checks and balances are spotify and the digital industry suddenly letting us know like hey like yeah no we we admit like this is going on <laughs> this is an issue. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because all right, for them, yeah, I definitely wouldn't say it's bots, like the platforms themselves, because anybody who owns the platform, it doesn't make sense to do bots, right? right. It just becomes advertising. Especially not at this stage. Right, it's yeah. like I'm CNN, I'm Fox, I'm any of these companies, and in between TV shows, I'm showing commercials. Yep. So everybody's content is a TV show, and I'm showing commercials, which is, oh, this artist's content or this celebrity's content. They're just choosing and they're putting it in the in the stream to make sure it gets a certain amount of attention. Yep. That's what those platforms do from my experience. And the thing is, which I can say, yes, it does help artists 
and influencers and celebrities who are a part of these programs who have that favor in terms of getting visibility. But one thing I can't admit, it goes back to that same fundamental. People are people. Quality is quality. I've seen these inflated numbers and the content still does bad. So you still can't force it. Where I've seen TikTok push content for an artist and they get like 4 million views, but the comments look so bad, you think they just ran an ad, right? Versus them pushing to 500, a million people who did so well within that audience, then it started to organically go viral. So the content still gotta be good content. The thing is, Spotify is so different. You, we never really get to look at um, like likes and comments and stuff. Yeah, you don't you know have I mean? anything to gauge it against. Yeah. yeah, so it's just happening. The only thing that happens different is somebody get, get a bigger check or not. And I think another way that we can look at it is it take 30% of your, your income, your royalties. What do we call that? Uh, discovery mark. mode. Yeah, yeah, okay, That's yeah. basically the same thing. When yeah. you discovery mode, they're basically saying we're going to put it out there as a part of commercial because we get a little cut, yep. right? Which I'm not faulting Spotify for that. Like I know a lot of people don't like things like that or whatever, and everything should be done free, but you can't expect somebody to build a platform and not want to participate in some of what happens on their platform because that's the same message we shoot we spill, uh, tell y'all artists right y'all are fighting to hey we have our thing that we build and and we want to make sure we get a cut and don't want to get violated same thing mm -hmm. for them as a platform but i think that shows that they have the ability to do it and the i guess the big flip in my conclusion is we're just all of this is going to force us to go from illegal boosted streams to legal boosted streams. Well, I was just about to ask you that, bro. Like, you know, I, you know, the music industry is innovative. You know, a lot of facets of the industry get kicked down, but they don't stay down for too long. You know what I'm saying? Nah. And, and so that that genuinely makes me wonder, like, as, as fucked up of a question as it sounds like, but like, what's the future of, of music fraud look like? Because a lot of the checks and balances that I'm, I'm assuming are being put in place to combat this apply to so many things that are yeah. music marketing and audience centric now. You know, it's not like, like my mentor once told me that back in the day, they would fudge the numbers on their sheets of how many albums they sold in the venue to make it like, yo, we sold 50, but we gonna put, we sold 500 to make that stop look more lucrative. It's like, so there's always been versions of fraud that made sense for like what was allowed and what was possible at the mm -hmm. time in music. This one seems to stop a lot of what is allowed and a lot of what is possible right now. And I can't imagine like what the next fraud, <laughs> what the yeah. next level of fraud is after this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cause I think it's like drugs, right? It's like, if it's not illegal, that just creates a lucrative legal industry. Right? Yeah. All that infrastructure. So we're gonna push it. We're still gonna have um, a system that favors certain people. All right, the people who can get the money, the people who can make it to connections, et cetera. All that's gonna exist. Yeah. Cause it can't be available to everybody but it'll be legal and how we can handle it, i.e. something like Discovery Bowl, to me is still like a a prototype or a mm -hmm. diluted version or a light version of, of something like that. But there's always gonna be a space for some kind of fraud because, you know, there's, there's, a, there's some criminals, you know, people who doing, operate in the gray, that they're only doing that until they can figure out how we can operate in the green, right? How we can operate That's in the true. light. That is true. But, but that then there's, true. Yeah. but there are some people, <laughs> they just ignore the the new legal way to do it, and it's like, nah, I want to find another <laughs> another black hat activity to do wrong. So it's gonna be the people who there's, there's always gonna be the people who innovate and find the next illegal finesse because people are always just trying to figure out what the advantages is are no different than the merch bundle system having to evolve and yeah. you know so many different times yeah, yeah. that's because it, it is crazy you know and this isn't me caping for, for fraud people in music but it is a weird symbiosis between the people that figure out how to fraud in music and the development of the music industry you know what i'm mm. saying like it's all, it's a lot of times like it's like man it took a car wrecking for us to put a stop sign at the end of this that's how society that's evolves. That's, that is true. Yeah, you're right. That There's a so in, De in Denmark. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. In Denmark, they can have babies outside. They not that not they can. In Denmark, they have the uh, strollers, and you go eat, eat at a restaurant. You will see babies lined up. Like a, like at a bike rack. You basically like a bike rack. They just crazy. out there, right? Okay. People eat on the inside. <laughs> you don't have to worry about all them babies crying or whatever. They they believe that the babies can um, they get fresh air. 
right? It's good for them. Let them yeah. sleep. Let them rest. All right. Okay. They don't have to worry about people like kidnapping the babies, issues like that. That's a cultural thing that they have. Okay. Yeah. And when I saw that and I learned that, it made me think about how you hear about old America, old parts of society, and how much things have evolved, right? And all it takes is a couple of bad actors doing some crazy stuff and changing that part of society, that norm forever, yeah. right? And now yeah. all of a sudden, people got to have their babies on the inside. Now all of a sudden, you know, like people can't yeah, eat out as doors. much unless they can yeah. get a babysitter. <laughs> and like, you know, it, it just changes things. And we have so many parts of our society, if we think about pre-9-11, post-9-11, like I, when I was in the 90s, I was able to be like walked all the way to the gate by my parents. Like, heard, you know what I mean? I heard about that. Like little. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't get the experience that yeah, I hear about little, it. Little stuff like that. And now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody can go, can barely yeah. get, get you can be, the person with the ticket can barely get through. Yeah. Right? Like, so I think it's the same way. The, the music industry is super re- reactionary because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like some of this, like you build a system and you benefit from it, but you don't know where all the loopholes are or where the bad actors are going to attack. And, so, and then there is the other side of it is you kind of see some of the loopholes, but no one's really incentivized mm-hmm. to patch them up until it starts getting taken advantage of because it costs to patch that thing up. Yeah. So I don't want to do it until I'm forced yeah. to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that just is what it is. Yeah, it's like, it's like we, we go back to 2018 and assume that there was tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars being, you know, I guess basically stolen through fraud campaigns. We can imagine that number today being millions and tens of millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, okay. to your point, and that's is, this is even as someone that like, you know, like I've been aware of fraud streaming, not my entire marketing career, but I learned about it pretty early on in my marketing career. And to see how it's developed over time is really interesting. Like, you're just like, damn, like it's the same scam niggas was running back in 2018, but it's a little more refined now. Like it mm-hmm. got like, Phono elements to it, and then the, the copy on it's pretty tight, and like the the website looks way more. But it's, a, it's the same shit. It's the exact same shit. That's that, there's like a scam now. We had a client almost get caught up in this. Where like there's a place in scam that's going on where somebody will add you in a playlist, right? And you'll wake up and your numbers are going crazy, and then you're like, damn, what the fuck is going on? And then there'll be like a DM from somebody on Instagram like. Yo, you like that, don't you? Like, the stream's looking crazy, ain't that? He's like, yeah, uh, that's you? So yeah, that's crazy. me, $300, I can get you another. And I, and I, I've, I mean, I, I called this client early enough, I'm like, bro, like, we being real, like, that was a legitimate business. That would be a genius strategy to do, bro. Like, that shit is smart as fuck, but it's like, because it's fucked up, it's fucked up, you know? But, <laughs> <laughs> but I said to say, yeah, man, like, I think nothing but great things are coming this, if nothing else, outside of just, the industry norms that are changing, and the conversation that happened within the industry. I'm excited for there to be something that is transparent for all the artists to see so that that narrative can just become, to your point, just like a new moral ground for artists. Because I do think we are in real time watching the public, for lack of better words, like Lynch artists over that. And we're mm. watching the industry itself try to figure out how to put restraints and all, overall like outlaw it. And I think that, I mean, overall it's a good thing. It's gonna yeah. create, this even, not even, but this seemingly even playing field that all artists have been asking for. Yeah. And that's the part that I'm excited about. <laughs> Facts, can't disagree with this. <laughs> this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. We out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.